What's up, everybody? My name is Hao Vu, and this is the Hao Vu Moto Vlog. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's been a little while since I've thrown up anything on the tube, but I'm back. Nothing much to say, really, and partly, mainly, that's the reason why I haven't been uploading since Yosemite. I don't have footage that beautiful, by the way. It's just going to be me riding around Sacramento again, guys, until the next big trip, which is probably either going to be to Tahoe or the coast, Sonoma Coast. We'll see gonna happen shortly here but yeah I don't I'm still loving my 2020 CBR 500R I don't really know you know what else you guys want to know about I get a lot in the comments you know is is it, is it this bike or the Kawasaki Ninja 400 it's a common one that people want to know and it's you know it's hard because I don't really have anything to compare it to this bike and you know I'm only eight months in my riding journey there's only so much to say without being a complete bullshitter you know what I mean so for all of you who need to know, Kawasaki Ninja 400, Honda CBR 500R, I picked the Honda CBR 500R, but it really, it just depends on what kind of riding you want to be doing and, and what you value out of your motorcycle and what you want to get. If money is the biggest thing for you, if looks is the biggest thing for you, if zero to 60 is the biggest thing for you, if gas, um, you know, total gas mileage is the biggest thing for you, you know, those are all pretty much hard, cold hard facts. So, I mean, just, just kind of decide based on cold hard facts, I would say. Um, and it's cold hard fact that the Kawasaki Ninja is cheaper. It's $2,000 cheaper, $2,000 less MSRP and maybe 70, 80 cc's less, but it's much lighter. It's quicker off the line than the, Ninja, the, the CBR 500R. The Ninja is quicker off the line. It gets probably about a whole second faster, zero to 60. Um, so that's, if you want to be quick, if you want to be a little more torquey down low, it's probably going to be the Ninja for you. But for me, it was the Honda. I want to put my money behind Honda. Honda is the number one motorcycle manufacturer in the world. They have a very rich history. They make really good, dependable engines. And that's not to say that the other manufacturers don't. I mean, they call them the big four for a reason. For those of you who don't know, the big four in terms of motorcycling manufacturers are the big Japanese manufacturers, namely Honda, Yamaha, Kawasaki, and Suzuki. In no particular order, but um, I think, I mean, for sure Honda is the biggest in terms of the motorcycles that they produced and probably the money that they take in. Um, but you know, they're all going to be really good brands. Can't really go wrong buying things made in Japan. The, those dudes really care about the products that they're making. Speaking of which, when it comes to motorcycling gear and parts and mods, what I have to report are my wish list now consists of an Arai Quantum X helmet with the Oriental paint scheme. Oriental, they call it, is this kind of Japanese cartoony classical artwork with the waves and the dragon and the koi fish and you know it's kind of it's kind of cheesy but it's fun it pops you know it's eye catching it's definitely more interesting than the matte black that i always go with which is admittedly kind of boring so yeah i'm definitely going to get that I've been saving up a little money here and there for it don't want to buy it outright because it's it's such an expensive helmet awry helmets are very very expensive and i've stayed away from them in the past just because they don't look all that great and if you guys know me i'm really I'm really big on aesthetics and, you know, those helmets, the Arai helmets, they are very round and very 90s looking, you know, nothing too aggressive about them. A lot of the helmets that are coming out nowadays are very kind of very modern, very futuristic even, very Halo-esque, you know. But the the Arai helmets, I did a little research into them. They've been making these helmets for decades and decades. They're all handmade in Japan and they're just all about safety. They all come with the Snell ratings and um, they're just really passionate about making very very sturdy, very comfortable, very premium helmets. You know, they're very proud of the, the products that they make. So I want to put one on my noggin. I went to Cycle Gear, try it on, and even luckily they had the actual color scheme that I wanted, so I got, got to see it in person. And in terms of comfort, in terms of fit, it was just a world of difference. It was like a step above, a clear step, two steps above the helmet that I currently have now, which is which is a great helmet. Don't get me wrong. I mean, 600 miles that Yosemite that one day, not once did I think about my helmet. And that's that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But I'm definitely going to get the Quantum X. The thing about Arai is that they make helmets that are for round oval types as well as intermediate oval when most other manufacturers are just making for the intermediate oval head shape which is most of america and that's why they do it but awry is catering to more specific head shapes because if it fits the shape of your head better then it will feel better and it certainly just fits my more round head shape a little better so that's in terms of the helmet also for yosemite it was a couple i guess a couple months ago now 
I bought a little USB port for my phone that connects to the wire, the battery tender wire. And so it just sits underneath the passenger seat. I put a little lightning cable underneath there so I can charge my phone or like a camera or a GoPro in a pinch or something like that. So that is just neat. It was like 10 bucks on Amazon. So pretty, pretty worth it investment, I guess, there. Just a small little thing, easy to install. And as far as the bike, in the next probably week or so, I'm going to order an anti-gravity lithium-ion battery for it. And it's just much lighter than the current battery. If you've, if you've ever taken out a motorcycle battery or a car battery, the traditional lead batteries, they're just so heavy. It's like a block of cement. So it's definitely weight savings. And it's also stronger, more, more cr cold cranking amps, I believe that's what they call it. I had a lithium ion battery installed on my previous bike, the CB300. And um, it was just a world of difference. When It was just so much more ple pleasing to, to start up the bike and fire it up because it would just be stronger and faster and more powerful and just to have that extra power available to start I mean it's just um, I think it's worth it the lithium ion battery like I said it's lighter and it, it lasts longer I think it's rated for more cycles than a traditional lead battery so I definitely think it's worth it I, I definitely think you know that kind of technology is the future of you know motorcycle batteries so that's it just the battery the new helmet on the horizon and a little USB port nothing nothing too crazy I'm not not thinking about any kind of performance mods or anything like that. I don't really. I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I think this bike might be the one, guys. I, I think she might be the one. We're talking about comparing the motorcycle to to women, and you know, this is the kind of motorcycle that you you take home to meet your mom. You know what I'm saying? Like she's she's an all around beauty, and you know, smart comes from a good family, good sense of humor. Like that's that's a CBR 500R. I mean, she's just a great all-around bike guys I love the fuel economy I love that it's enough power for the street I think you know when you say when I say at least the kind of power that you need really just depends on the kind of riding you're gonna be doing obviously if you're just taking the bike around the city then you could argue that you don't need to go any faster than 60 miles per hour right but for me I definitely want to take it on the highway and do you need you know, a certain amount of power on the highway. Certain people in the comments have, you know, told me that, oh, you're just a newbie rider. You think that you need more power, but you really just need to learn how to ride or, you know, you need to be playing chess, not checkers, thinking ahead. And I get that. I get why people would say that. But I mean, understand where I'm coming from. It's not, I never did I say that you need power and power is going to make you a safe rider because it's certainly not, right? It's certainly not. But all I'm saying is if you intend to do highway riding, you should have a motorcycle that has some passing power. Maybe not a crazy amount, but at least enough to get you out of a situation or to get past something that you need to get past in a pinch. I'm not saying that situation's going to come up often. I'm not saying when it comes up, it's going to be my fault or someone else's fault or the lack of me playing chess or checkers. But I'm saying... If it comes up, I'd rather have the power and not need it than need it and not have it. Plain and simple, right? Plain and simple, right? Then the 300, it's not an option on the highway, right? You don't really have that much passing power on the highway. You're just like a, a little duck just breezing along. And with the, with the, like, if a car passes you too fast, you might just be blown away and not be able to do anything about it, right? So obviously, I'm exaggerating a little bit there, but that's just my point there, you know? I think... The, the 470cc parallel twin, you know, it's not a tremendous amount of power, definitely not a tremendous amount of torque, but it's enough to get everyday riding done, and it's certainly enough to have fun, you know, fun in the twisties, fun enough it, for me when I roll on the throttle and I just want to feel the, the enjoyment of, like, passing somebody or just zooming in and out, you know, it, it does that for me. And w is it as fun, is it as much as a thrill as a leader bike or a 650 super sport? No, of course not. Of course not. But you also have to give up certain things when you move up to the super sport family, right? You have to give up some gas mileage. You have to pay more for insurance. You have to sacrifice your riding position, right? Every dude I see on the super sport motorcycles, when they're just riding around town, it's just like um, Eddie from Moto Jitsu. He calls it Lion King syndrome. And it really is. It look, it's like the baboon Rafiki in the Lion King or baboons in general, how they walk with the, you know, their, their front arms fully extended at a, at a super serious angle. Like that's how people ride their super sport bikes when they're cruising around town. They have to do that because the, the handlebars are just so low. So it's just like all this weight resting on the wrists. And it's just, it's just not a comfortable position for long trips. And I definitely want the ability to do long trips. You know, I really, I think it takes a special kind of person to ride 600 miles a day on a super sport motorcycle. I mean, show me, show me a person, show me the YouTube footage 
Show me a vlog of a guy on an R1 and an R6 that goes 600 miles in a day and it doesn't completely hate himself afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So it's all dependent on the type of riding you're going to be doing and what kind of rider that you are. And for me, it's just at this point and it, 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 what I've experimented with so far and the riding that I'm doing so far, like it's working out really, really nicely for me. Not to mention, I pay $130 a month for insurance right now, partly because I have a speeding ticket and traffic violation on my name. I'm curious to see when those drop off this year how much my rate is going to go down. But, I mean, that's a heartbreaking amount of money per month. You know, truly it is. When I pay off my motorcycle at the end of this month, I'm going to have the option of moving down to one-way insurance, which is literally going to cost like $20 a month. So, you know, that's something that I'm considering. I can already hear the comments now about insurance, so I'm not going to get into that. I mean, definitely, it's something to think about. $130 a month, like how do you justify paying $130 a month? I know I don't know about what what you guys have the situation in, in riding or whatever, but, you know, some people just have the garage, the bike in their garage all week long, and they go riding for maybe an hour on Sunday, right? And maybe some people can afford to just have a bike and pay insurance and just for one hour every week for four hours a month or, you know, and I'm not to say that I need to get my, like, you know, some bang for my buck. But if I'm investing this much money and I've already invested this much time into the sport, you know, what do I want to get out of it? How do I make that worth it for me? And lately, for me, what that's been like is just enjoying it, trying to enjoy every moment on the motorcycle and not worrying about having a faster bike or not worrying about the next thing or not worrying about, you know, any just riding around thinking about the troubles in my life or anything like that. I'm really just trying to be there and enjoy the free things in motorcycle riding and enjoy the things that are inherent to motorcycling and not specifically to a certain type of bike or certain size engine, you know, just the feeling of the wind in your face, the feeling of rolling on the throttle, the sound of the engine, the different feeling and intricacy, like little characteristics of being in each gear, you know, braking, front brake, rear brake, letting out the clutch slowly, having these smooth shifts, downshifting, rev matching, all this is really fun stuff. And, you know, as I've been getting more experience, as the fear has been going down, you know, I've been able to enjoy myself more and more just doing little things. Every time I hop on the bike, every time I throw my leg over it, just, you know, enjoying it. Even if it's a 97 degree day and all I'm doing is going to Safeway to get some groceries, you know, just really enjoying it, you know. Um, so that's that's where I am, you know, just trying to see where this is going to take me. And I guess trying to develop myself into a true motorcyclist, someone who is trying to hone this this craft and really be a good motorcyclist so you know will it be time to upgrade i don't know maybe maybe if i'm getting the knee down and just sh completely shredding it up uh, around town and i just really feel like i truly need the power to enjoy myself more right basically i'm trying to squeeze as much enjoyment as i can right now with what i've got at this point in my career without worrying about the next thing without worrying about the next big bike, you know, trying to be so grateful for what I have now and developing everything I can in terms of my skill and my joy before I even consider moving up. Right. So that's it, guys. 2400 miles in on this CBR 500R. I'm loving her. Me and her might go all the way. You know, she might be the one, like I said before. But if you guys have anything you want to know, just let me know in the comments. You want to roast me? You want to have a little conversation? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.